Hello everybody, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL's Advanced Edition here on board the MSS Compensation, our Kestrel Cruiser Type C, where we have been uh, destroying our way across the galaxy with our ruthless crew, freelancer, entrepreneur, raider, and mercenary. We have got ourselves a pretty decent setup so far, although our defenses are a little bit weak with only two bars of shields. We're going to keep going, though, and see what else we can uncover here in the Rock Home Worlds. Uh, hopefully, we can do some good damage here. We're also looking for the Rock Home Worlds quest, if we can get so lucky. We'll find out, though. A rock ship flies past our windows and we recognize outcast decorations on the hull. These must be pirates. However, they're pirates with a cloaking system to burst laser mark three from the looks of it, which is bad news for us. That's going to make them a lot harder to take down before they can get a salvo off. I don't actually think we can stop them here. They're going to be fire about six, five or six seconds after they decloak, and we take at least ten seconds to charge up, so they're going to get at least one salvo at us, hopefully our evasion pays off this time. Come on, evasion. Oh, baby. That was what I'm talking about. That's some sweet evasion. All right, let's blast that weapon system, and by which I mean completely miss that weapon system. That's not good. That's going to mean that we have to rely even more on our unlikely evasion here. Thankfully, though... Oh man, you guys are doing an amazing job! Our evasion is phenomenal today! So, we're gonna try and take these guys down again. Please knock out that big laser. Please, please, please. Thank you! That's what I'd like to see. Set some fires, which isn't a big deal for Rock Crew, but does at least slow down their repairs. And the system is completely down. So next up, we're gonna knock out their shields, I think, to make them even more susceptible to spam damage. That's what we like to see. Now they're vulnerable. They've cloaked out, which is a little bit of a problem, but really they're not that dangerous anymore because the odds of them being able to get their shields or weapons up significantly enough to hurt us at this point is basically zero. So let's smash these guys into a fine snortable powder and watch as they are obliterated. Dual lasers on a person with nobody in the helm. Three more shots into weapons. Down goes the pirate fighter. Nice try. Ship explodes, giving us a missile drone part and 28 scrap. We will definitely take that. Let's jump over this way and see what else we can uncover in this area. We jump into the middle of a rock excavation project on a nearby moon. Unimpressed with the intrusion, they move to defend themselves. Well, do they? They've got a burst laser mark two, a burst laser mark one, a mini beam, and a heavy ion, so they certainly do seem to be moving in to engage. They've also boarded us, which is always annoying. Let's send our Lanius crew to go protect our clone bay, as that does look like where they're going. I will let him attack it for a little bit, though, because there's no point going in there by myself. I need to get some additional crew in there to help defend. And here come a whole heap ton of lasers. Thankfully, only one of those actually hit us, which is really nice of them. All right, now now it's time to blast them in the weapons as hard as we possibly can and hopefully prevent them from hitting us too hard in retaliation. That's what we're talking about. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Knocked them to pieces. And we set the weapons room heavily on fire, which is very convenient for us stopping them retaliating as well. All right. That was basically perfect. I could not have asked for a better salvo there. We have a very injured crew coming back to their ship. They've got two full health rockmen in the weapons room, but that's fine because we're about to pound their shields to pieces. And now they're all going to be preoccupied with that instead. They only have three hull left, which means we can basically kill them as soon as we have a shot rate of fire. The rock ship moves into a defensive position and transmits a white flag signal. They seem willing to buy their lives, offering three fuel, two missiles, and twenty scrap, but we don't accept their surrender and murder them like the heartless beings we are. Goodbye, rock interceptor. It was nice knowing you. Ship explodes, giving us a paltry offer. We should have taken their previous one, as it turns out, but who knew? We get one missile, one drone part, and 28 scrap. All right. Well, let's keep moving. We're going to go over this way, and we're probably going to jump up through here. We might jump over here first, though. See what we find along the way. We recognize this ship as a well-known slave trader. He hails us, offering us laborers for cheap. Well, let's attack that slaver scum, despite the fact that he has pretty phenomenal weaponry. With a Hermes missile launcher and a Vulcan laser, he has some pretty phenomenal firepower, if he can actually get it up to speed. Hopefully, though, he never will. As long as this Hermes missile doesn't hit our weapons, we have a pretty good shot here at permanently disabling him before he really gets to do anything with it. Oh, the Hermes missile didn't quite go down in time, and, ooh, that's a nasty hit in the engines. We're about to lose our Lanius crew member, so we're going to have to vent this room and get him regenerating in there. All right, time to fire again, hopefully pre preventing them from actually firing another one of those rockets. They are trying to run away now, which could be a problem for us, because we're going to need to have some hefty firepower to stop them. We'll see, though. All right, weapons are ready, more or less, anyway. And let's fire on that helm to prevent them from getting out of here. There we go. They try and surrender, offering us fish as tribute, but surrender is not an option, my good sirs. We are going to destroy you utterly, as best we can. 
You are trying to put that fire out quite quickly, though, and the moment you do, we are done for, so we have to destroy you before that can happen. We're gonna fire over here at this empty room. There we go, Pirate Bomber goes down. Arlenius crew took a bit of a beating there, but he'll be fine. Entrepreneur, you can do it. The slave ship is destroyed, then we'll continue the evil trade, but many lives were probably lost on board that ship, getting us two fuel, a missile, and 42 more scrap. I'd love to spend that scrap on engines already, or rather on shields already, boosting us up to three levels, but for now I think I'll hold off on that, although we are very low on hull, so I'm not sure if that's entirely a good idea. But we don't really have many options in that respect at the moment. Turn off the clone bay, and we're going to have to wait a little bit here while our Lanius friend gradually repairs that system. Unfortunately, we did lose some evasion out of that, but it only takes three successful dodges to max himself back out again. Losing those uh, engines and helm crews are nowhere near as bad as losing your weapons or your shield crew, because they could lose a heck of a lot of experience when they go. So, for now it's fine. We're going to wait a little bit longer to make sure we can actually repair the rest of our engines before anything bad happens. There we go. There's a store over there we could go to, but we're going to take a risk here. We're not going to go to the store. We're going to jump over this way and play around over here and see what else we can find. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and won't have to buy any repairs. A motley collection of rock ships are stationed around this beacon. They look to have resorted to a pirate's life, and we take de defensive maneuvers. They've got a Flak 1, a Burst Laser 2, and a Heavy Ion. Nothing too nasty, although they are coming close to a lot of our crews. We're going to have to deal with that when they get there. All right, guys, get in there and defend this system. So we have ourselves ready to fire, although I did just lose my ev evasion experience there because I had to leave this system early, which was silly, but whatever. Here come some more lasers. Hopefully they get a lot of misses. Ow, oh, 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 boy. Well, that's really bad. We have one hull left. All right. Looks like I may have overestimated this. Thankfully, we resisted their Ion attack, which is a very unusual sight. Let's hopefully not die here, although the odds are pretty low. One point of damage from this thing will kill us. Oh ho. Just barely survived that one. Alright, the uh, weapons are almost back online. Firing on their weapons, of course, again. Sending our Lanius crew back to the engines to repair there. Their weapons are now locked offline, which is good for us. We need to go fix our doors and sensors, though, eventually, so we might as well go do that now. Turn the dual lasers back online to give us some extra firepower to throw at these guys. We really need to make sure they never get a chance to shoot at us again. So we're going to do our best to make sure that is the case. You will never fire those weapons again. Not if we can help it. Alright. Dual lasers are online as well. Probably could have fired them in that previous salvo, but I wasn't quite prepared for it, so we did not. There we go. And we've killed the crew, what do you know? We find a weapon system on their ship, with no crew to stop us, we can install it on our own, we get 21 scrap and a hull missile, very nice. Can we go back to that store actually? I think we're gonna go back to that store actually. With one hull, playing with fire isn't such a good idea. <laughs> We come across a rock trading post here. It's rare they deal with outsiders, but they need to sell the last of their stock and will pay their dues for that transgression when they return home. All right, what do you have here? You have an explosive replicator, which gives us missiles 50% of the time. Life form scanner, which gives us slug senses. Slug zone shield bypass, which we can't use at all. Cloaking, which we can't afford yet. We could, though. Pegasus, charge laser twos. Those are some interesting weapons. We could sell the reverse ion field and the hull. We'll sell the hull missile now. That could get us cloaking and some repairs. We really badly need repairs, but I'm really tempted to buy cloaking anyway. We're gonna do it. This is a li we're living on the wild side now. We could sell the reverse ion field, but I'm actually gonna hold on to it, because why not? Gotta live dangerously sometimes. Alright, back over to the weapons. We have a cloaking system now, which we can eventually power, probably using O2 to do that. That'll give us the ability to dodge missiles and things, which is really useful. Um, I would have liked to buy some different... Uh, Utility systems, perhaps, but I will definitely take advantage of this one since we've got it. A rock mining vessel is harvesting the mineral-rich asteroids in this locality, and their scouts have taken our presence to be a transgression. Battle stations it is. They've got another burst laser, but these guys have no cloak, so the odds of us being able to lock them down before they can fire that thing is significantly higher. And if they do fire it, we have our cloak ready, so we can just dodge it. We'll see what happens, though. Hopefully... Oh boy, this could be bad. We have very little health still, so we really need to take advantage of everything we can possibly get our hands on. Thankfully... Uh oh Time for that cloaking to happen, I think. Here comes the lasers. Come on now. Alright, cloak time. Let's just dodge all of that. Don't want anything to do with all that mess of firepower. Thankfully, though, we can lay down some more hurt on them. There we go. That's knocked their power out. We're going to send some power back to the O2 again, since they can't actually fire at us. We might as well get our air in our ship. They've got a lot of crew in there, but we have a lot more lasers to throw at them, so hopefully we'll be able to kill some more of them if we get lucky. 
There's another breach, which is nice. The more air we can suck out of that system, the better. Although it looks like they're repairing quite quickly, and potentially they have a higher level O2 system, so the odds of us actually being able to knock it out are basically zero. We'll see, though. Keeping up the heat here, killing off a rock man, which is lovely. They're down to only four hulls. The odds of them being able to survive this battle are getting increasingly slim. I'm not too worried overall here. Take some more shots at them. There we go. Their system suffering. The rock ship attempts to make contact. Alien vessel, cease your attack. We will pay. Offering us two fuel, four missiles, and 17 scrap. No, thank you. You shall die, is what you shall do. You've got no crew on the helm. Your remaining crew are quite badly injured, and we're going to blast you till you die. You have no evasion. Goodbye, rock fighter. All right. Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, a drone part, and 33 scrap, which is a much superior offer. Fantastic. Let's move on. There's another store over here, unfortunately. We're going to go to this distress beacon, though, and work our way across. I could potentially go to the store and buy some more repairs, but you know what? We're not doing that today. We already said that. Our cockpit lights up with warning signals. We're being targeted by a nearby ship, and the stress call was a lure to attract unwitting ships in weapons range. We prepare for a fight. All right, we might need that cloak again here. They have a pike beam, chain laser, and spacic laser. Doesn't look too dangerous to me, but we'll have to wait and see what exactly what happens. Take some shots at them here. Try and knock that shield down, hopefully. If their evasion is high, this could be really irritating, but thankfully it's not. Now, I believe these fired about the same time. They do, but they fire in such a way that they're completely harmless. So that's great. The chain laser will start firing more quickly, but not if we immediately blow it up. Not if we immediately blow it up, game. Not that it really matters, though, because they're still firing pretty badly out of sync, I believe. We're going to cloak this salvo out anyway, though, just to be safe. I think we would have been fine, but it's better safe than sorry. Firing off more lasers, take down those weapons, there we go. Blow up a Zoltan in the process, that's what we like to see. Exploding Zoltan are a beautiful thing. Alright, get ready to lay down some more hurt here. We're going to go for their helm this time, so they cannot get out of here. They're trying to get out of here, unfortunately for them, they're not going to be doing that anymore. They try and surrender, offering us two missiles, a two fuel, and 19 scrap. We don't accept that surrender. We can expect to get more from them if we just kill them. And now they have no chance for evasion, and they will go down with our next salvo. Goodbye, pirate fighter. Nice try. All right. Ship explodes, getting us two fuel, a missile, and 35 scrap. We're definitely not playing things safe here, but we're going to keep doing it like we are anyway. We have 68 scrap to spend, which we can't quite make, like can't quite justify spending. I could maybe afford to buy another reactor bar so I don't have to constantly take power out of my engines. I guess I should do that. There we go. And let's jump over in this direction. Hopefully we get some more good stuff out of here before we have to leave. Looking for some repairs would be lovely. It looks quiet, but realize our computer is being scanned. A hidden rock vessel hails us. Why do you fill your computer with lies? These are not the holy words. Before we can interject, they open fire. Well, not much we can do about that. That, however, is... Oh, this whole ship is bad news. A pair of burst laser Mark 1s, and uh, they've got a breach missile on board as well. We're going to have to dodge that sucker. Hopefully their aim isn't very good, because I want to hold on to the evasion for the big weapon. But if we're unlucky here and they hit something important, ooh, we could lose a lot of our potential evasion. There we go. We actually got pretty lucky there. They hit weapons and engines, but that's not so bad, because we can still dodge that breach missile now. And that is pretty crucial. Missile coming in, going for the dodge. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to fire again at their weapons. We have a fairly significant chance of missing still, but we're going to take the shot anyway. Uh, we hit one time, unfortunately, but that's fine. At least the dual lasers, or the two burst laser mark ones, rather, are both offline, which means there's a much lesser chance of the enemy being able to throw those at us. Take some more shots again. Hopefully one of these can hit now. We have extra shots coming in. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now they are completely disabled. Weapons and the system is on fire. There's a breach in it as well. Those rock men are going to have a hard time repairing that sucker, especially since we're going to lay down some more hurt on it now, just to make sure they regret their decision. The rock ship hails. Enough. We were told aliens were a threat to our ways, and you have proved as much. Take this and leave us in peace. Five fuel, seven missiles, and 20 scrap. The five fuel and seven missiles is a pretty phenomenal offer. I don't think we're going to get much better than this, and even though we don't need the missiles, we can always give them away in events later. And we might pick up a missile weapon, who knows? Something like a Pegasus missile could be fun, since we have 30 missiles if we take this offer. Or we could not accept their surrender and try and be greedy. I think we're going to accept their offer, though, this time. That's a pretty good deal. They're offering a good amount of resources. Might as well take it. There you go. You can live, Rock Scout. Congratulations. There's another success beacon over here. Let's go check that out and then hopefully make our way back towards the exit and get out of here before anything else bad happens. 
This distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defenses have gone haywire, and their repair crew can't approach without being fired on. Looking for help to fix or disable it, we agree to help because we know we have two systems that'll let us do it. We're going to use the ion weapon to disable their defense system, and we use our ion weaponry, like we said, to disable it long enough for their repair crews to fix the system. They message us saying, I've never seen a weapon like that before. Thanks for your help. Please accept this reward. Two fuel, two missiles, 48 scrap. That's a nice reward indeed. Let's get over this way and see if we can't hit these last two beacons before the exit without dying. We have very little hull, which is a very silly thing. Here we happen upon the remains of a space station. It's been mostly picked clean, but there appear to be a few materials that will aid us in our mission. One missile, one drone part, and 37 scrap, to be precise. We're going to immediately power up our shields again, using this power here to temporarily do that. Jump to here, then the exit, and see what we can get on the way out. What's all of this, then? We're immediately messaged here by an imposing-looking rock war vessel. You're the ship off to save the Federation, aren't you? And you expect to survive with that hunk of junk? Well, we're strong enough to destroy you. One ship is not the same as a fleet, but at least you've got some fire. Meet us at these coordinates if you want to prove to us that the Federation's worth saving. And they jump away. Alright then. So, that is our Rock Homeworlds quest. Let's hit up this exit beacon and get out of Dodge. Hopefully there's nothing too nasty here. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon where we discover a number of ships stationed around a rest stop. We immediately receive a message saying, If you're looking for some bodies to fill your ships, you've come to the right place. Uh, but not this time, thank you very much. We're not going to hire anybody and we're going to get out of here. Next sector, we have Abandoned Sector or Slug Home Nebula as options. I think we're going to go to the Abandoned Sector because we have Lania's crew on board. Slug Home Nebula is not bad. As it is a home nebula, it's got a pretty good selection of events in it. But I do like the Abandoned Sector with Elania, so you get a lot of nice blue options there. So let's go over here and check out what we can find here. Alright, there have been a number of reports of advanced ships salvaging the wrecks and abandoned mining facilities in this sector. Could it be that the Lanius have resurfaced? Yes, they have. We have one on board our very ship, you silly, silly game. However, I'm going to be right back, and then we will continue our adventure here in the next sector. I am out of water again. I go through a lot of water when I'm recording things, as people who've been on the stream would surely know. Anyway, I'll be back in just a second. That's better. All right. So, let's keep moving here and see what we can accomplish now. So, we have got ourselves here in Abandoned Sector. We have a quest beacon over there we definitely have to go get. So, let's jump over in that direction and hopefully not die since we only have four hull. What a silly thing. Well, wow, that's nice. Can't say no to that. We stumble across a badly damaged Lania's craft. It jumps away as soon as it sees us, and looking around the area, we discover a number of destroyed Rebel automated ships. It must have been quite the fight. We scrap our remains, getting three fuel, two missiles, 51 scrap, and an emergency respirator augment. Yes, please. Thank you. Distress beacon. Let's go check that out next. We might be able to get a Lania's blue event on that one. Let's see what we do. It appears the distress beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon, where our sensors are picking up a single life form. Let's go down to the surface to investigate. We find a man living alone in a cave. From the appearance of his wrecked ship, it seems he's been here for many years. He looks healthy, but his mental state is questionable. Since our hull is so low, we cannot afford to bring him back to our ship. We're going to have to leave him there and abandon him for the ages. Let's move onwards and see what else we can uncover here in our abandoned sector. A merchant ship is docked with Lanius Transport. We message them to see if they need any help, and it turns out they've been studying the Lanius' ability to reshape metal. Let's inquire about the process. They respond... We haven't the foggiest idea how it works. They appear to meld part of their bodies into the metal and reshape it. They've been willing to demonstrate their ability if you have some extra metal you would like converted into something. However, we have a Lanius crew, so we can get a pretty good offer. We offer to help in the process, and they say... Or, or rather, our crew member offers to aid in the process to speed along. They think, they think it can be performed a bit more efficiently with the extra help and request less scrap. We can get 35 scrap for an augment, 40 scrap for a weapon, or 30 scrap for a drone. Let's get a weapon. Random weapon time. A laser charger. I'll take it. We transfer over the scrap and watch the master craftsmen work. They easily reshape the metal into pieces they can use and then add various additional materials on their ship to construct the weapon. We thank them and load it on board. The laser charger I don't think is actually worth that much, but that's okay. It takes three power though, so we can use it instead of the dual lasers if we want. It's a long charge time, about 20 seconds total, but we can fire it freely if we need to and the... Uh, the 10 second charge time is the same as the dual laser, so it's actually a really good weapon option for what it costs. We'll hold on to it in our cargo hold for now though. We'll probably wind up using that later. For now though, we're gonna jump over to this quest beacon and probably get murdered. Let's jump over here and see what happens. Who knows? We're jumping into a sun. We arrive at the coordinates given and find ourselves dangerously close to a Clem class star. The other ship messages us. Let's see how long your puny ship can handle this heat. 
Prepare for a challenge. The shark ship powers up its FTL drive, and if we're going to withstand, we have to earn their trust and endure the heat as long as they can. They're going to have a lot of weapons to fire at us. Thankfully, though, we have a cloak, which makes this a lot easier, especially if they try and alpha strike us, which they probably will. They are boarding us with two rockmen and a helm, though, which is a real jerk move right now. All right, let's send some more crew over there to help, because we're going to need to. Here comes a pretty hefty salvo. Dodge that sucker. There we go. Oop. They managed to get through a pretty good amount of our defenses regardless, but thankfully, not enough. Then we're gonna kill some of their crew here, guys. You gotta teleport back to your ship if you don't want us to wreck you. Alright. You're about to kill our captain, which I don't super approve of, but whatever. Not much we can do about it at this point. Here comes our salvo at your weapons. Hopefully this will make you rethink your current strategy. There we go. Here comes a salvo of flak, but most of the rest of their stuff is down. They did kill our captain just before we had to leave, unfortunately. We'll send you back over to engines. They are about to solar flare. Oh, no boy damage. Whoop, 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 whoop. Down to two hull. Hopefully the solar flare. Oh, boy. Okay, solar flare did a point of damage. If we can't take out this fire before it burns out the rest of the sensors, we will die. These guys should be out of here in no time. Can we put this fire out before it kills us? Yes, just barely. All right, you get on the helm right now. You get on the engines right now. They jump away, they relay coordinates to our navigation system, and they must mean for us to follow them. I did say that we were going to live on the wild side this game, and we definitely are this time. <laughs> Let's jump over here and see if we can maybe not die with our one hull remaining. The charts indicate this was the location of a small skirmish over a military facility on a nearby moon. Oddly, scans pick up no, no signs of debris from either the battle or the station. Yet another area sucked dry by the Lanius. Alright, well let's do some repairs here before we inevitably die. <laughs> we are so close to death right now. Alright. Unfortunately, since we do have another augment, we're about to waste one when we talk to the rock men here at the next beacon, as I believe they always give you the rock hull augment, but we're going to talk to them and see what happens. All right. We arrive at a massive rock man shipyard and notice the ship that had just tried to kill us is docked and already being repaired. Well fought. I must say I did not expect you to survive. I'm convinced of your strength and pledge to assist your cause. We'll immediately send an advanced cruiser to the Federation fleet and we'll prepare our warships to move out. Now that's taken care of, let us patch up your hull. Maybe we can improve its armor plating while we're at it. 29 points of hull repaired. Thank you! And that is why it's cool to live on the wild side. Instant full hull repair. Now, we do have to either take rock plating or... Uh, rather, abandon rock plating or abandoning something else. We're going to abandon emergency respirators, though, because they're not that great, and rock plating is really quite nice. Igni uh, ignoring any hull damage is wonderful, so we'll do that. Reverse ion field could go as well, but I like having this for the flagship fight, actually, now, because it really neutralizes that triple ion launcher. Either way, though, we're going to move on. We just got the uh, tough little ship achievement here on hard mode, too, which is kind of funny. That's an unusual way to get it. Anyway, we'll let ourselves finish our repairs here and move on. Send Raider back over to the weapons system. Man, talk about a swift recovery there. That was beautiful. Now, hopefully we can make this jump back. Otherwise, this is going to suck. But we'll have to make do with what we can do. We have a lot of hull left. We need to tank a bit of enemy damage. An image of some weak and hungry humans comes onto our screen. Those metal bastards think they can just absorb half of our engines and leave us here to die. I hope you understand the need to take your ship by force. No, no, not really. You could just ask us to help you, and we probably would, you know. Alright, it looks like they're coming for our shield, so we'll send our whole crew over there. We should be able to get there pretty quick. We'll run you out of there quickly. Run you out of there quickly. We're actually going to stall everyone out of the room for a second. Now we move in to fight them. They're probably going to do some damage to us. Hopefully killing our Zoltan gives them a hard time, and hopefully our Lanius' ability to suck air out of a room also gives them a hard time. We're going to need to have the clone bay turned on, because we're definitely going to lose some crew here. Which is kind of disappointing, because we're just starting to get to be the point where we can actually build up our experience. These guys are mostly going to suffocate, though. Oh, you survived with, like, one health. Really? Ah. Alright, well, we'll have to wait till one of our crew re re revives if we can send him to go kill this guy. That was an unfortunate series of deaths, though. Knock him out. Thank you, Raider. Well done. You can hold on to your position there while we wait for everyone else to respawn. But ouch, that was an unfortunate, unfortunate event right there. We, we can move our Zoltan out, but I'm going to leave him there for now, Mercenary. You can just chill in here for a bit. 
while we wait for everyone else to revive, just to make sure there's no glitchiness with you are taking power out of the room and killing all of our friends. So let's send you back to the helm there, freelancer, and once Entrepreneur revives, we can send him back as well. Alrighty. There we go, get you back into the engines and uh, send our Zoltan friend back over to the shields where we can hopefully power it up again. There we go. So, that could have gone better. Can we make that jump though? Yes, we can. Fantastic. That is exactly what I'd hoped. Unfortunately, the event we got wasn't very good, but at least we got something different. This beacon appears to have been set up within an asteroid field to, to access a mining settlement. However, half of the settlement has been disassembled by a number of Lania scavengers. Their military escort moves in to scare us off. Well, this is a nasty combination of weaponry they've got here, especially since they're in a nebula. We can cloak some of it out, but they are boarding us, which also sucks. So let's send our crew to go fight this off, because we're going to need to, especially since they're in our clone bay. No, they're not anymore. Now they're in our doors. All right, guys, get in there. Actually, I should... Yeah, we'll swap over for our Lanius once he gets a bit closer, swap our Zoltan out. We do need to power the shields more, and we do need to power the engines more, so we, I guess we have to turn off the O2 to do so, which is going to make our crew suffocate really fast. But we don't have much of an option here. These guys have a really long cloak as well. Thankfully, we'll be able to cloak out more or less their entire salvo. Here comes, and there goes the cloak. They just shot an asteroid, which is an unusual series of events there. All right, we're going to lose Raider, so we're going to have to send our Zoltan back in after all anyway. Now we can turn the evasion down while we're cloaked, so we still, we'll still have power in the room. Get in there. Get in. Okay, there we go. We need to keep the offense up. Unfortunately, these guys don't suffocate, which makes this quite a bit harder for us to deal with than it otherwise might be. Now, we do have a good shot at their weapons now, so we're going to take it. Hopefully, they don't cloak right now, because they might. They just went home, which is fine. We're going to get you back to the engines. Power up the engines if we can. But first, we're going to take a salvo with their weapons, because we need to try. Just don't cloak right now, please. There we go. At least they lost the halberd. Oh, you jerks. All right, boost up the evasion. Take out our new fancy shield layer immediately like that. All right, thankfully they missed us with the asteroid, which is nice. They do have another Lido missile ready to fire, but we will have a cloak this time, which is important. All right, they've boarded us again because they're absolute jerks. All right, this is awful for us. We really need to upgrade our doors soon, but we seem to have a bit of a hard time managing that. Let's get you in there. You're going to have to sacrifice yourself for the good of the land. We need to keep that cloak alive until they respawn so we can actually take advantage of our evasion here. We need to dodge that salvo. Hurry up and respawn, dang nevit, or reappear. There we go, okay. Cloaking active! We lose our Lanius crew, sadly, but we dodge all of their attacks. We can send another salvo at them. They've actually just swapped their crew over, <coughs> which is kind of unusual. Alright, Zoltan, get out of that suffocation room. Go fix our shields. They are destroying our engines now. There's not much we can do about that. We do need to turn the O2 on as well, otherwise we can't actually go in the shield room safely. We're having a hard time right now. Alright, let's blast those weapons again and hopefully keep them offline this time. There we go. Unfortunately, the Lido, of all things, the Lido missile came back online. So, hopefully these guys decide to go back home soon, because otherwise we're going to keep taking damage. We did just get a pretty nice big heal, but if things go going like this, we're not going to be able to take advantage of it for much longer. And they've cloaked again, which is really awkward. Alright, let's get back in here and try and fight these guys. Zoltan, you're going to stay in this room and try and repair the shield damage. We have no cloak right now, either, since they did knock that system out, so we're going to take at least one more Lido missile from the looks of things. Just trying to distract them so they don't take out our engines completely, so that hopefully we have some chance of not dying to this incoming missile. We're going to fire a couple more shots over in this direction, take out the remainder of their weaponry. There we go. Our comm system receives a video feed of the enemy ship's crew waving small makeshift white flags. It appears they've taken research about our culture's customs quite literally. They're offering us four missiles, two drone parts, and 24 scrap. At this point, they're unlikely to be able to repair this anytime soon. We're likely to take at least one more rocket of damage. We're not going to accept their surrender, though, because I think we can do better than that. Ow. As we immediately get our engine set on, our shield set on fire, which is basically the worst thing that could have just happened. So we're going to try and vent out that system quickly, otherwise we are going to die. If our shields go down, the asteroids will kill us, and our shields are already kind of low. Thankfully, there was lot, not a whole lot of air in there already, so we're able to keep them alive pretty successfully, close all the doors, turn on the O2. What a mess! We're going to blast them this time, though. This should kill them pretty successfully, because we should be able to hit them... Oh, come on! There we go, an asteroid hits them as well. I was about to say, we should be able to hit them with the hull laser in their exposed areas to hit them for pretty massive damage, but not this time, apparently. All right. These guys are giving us a run for our money. We've only taken about three actual damage, but our crew have died repeatedly here, 
which is not very good for us, but whatever. We'll have to repair our systems and see what we can do to recover. These guys are basically doomed. They've got very little chance of survival now. Make your time and whatnot. There we go. Lanius Bomber is down. That was a disaster. Our ship explodes, revealing their cargo of unprocessed metal. We collect a significant amount of scrap. Well, two missiles, a drone part, and 52 scrap do make that pretty worthwhile. All right. We'll take it. We will take it. We need to go fix some more things, though. Let's go fix that cloaking. And hopefully this will all work out for us. So, let's see what happens. Repair up that system. There we go. Crew, back to your stations. And return power into the shields. We can't actually go to a store right now, so we're just going to have to keep jumping. There is a store right here. I think we can actually get there and then get out. We might be able to make all three of those jumps, which would be amazing. Let's go here. I don't know why I went to the store. I have nothing I want to buy. Whatever. Receive a message from nearby station. The end is upon us. The metal demons have come to absorb your very being. But it's not too late to prepare for the worst. It appears that was an advertisement for a space dock. We scan their products. They have a bunch of interesting pieces of junk, <laughs> more or less. I don't want to buy a medbay, really. I'm quite happy leaving the, the clone bay in as it stands. I would have liked to buy hacking, but we can't quite afford it. I could sell something like the charge laser or the ion stunner. I like having the ion stunner for blue options, though. And the charge laser, and the, I don't know. I don't know. If we were to try and use this thing, it cost us like 30... Well, actually, it's pretty good. It gives us 35 scrap for 30 scrap, so it's actually a pretty good deal for that, because it means it's worth about 70. Um... But yeah, if we want to use the Charge 2 instead of the Dual Laser Ion Stunner, we'd need to be able to upgrade the system two more times, which costs 190 scrap. So it's not super viable. I don't know. I don't even know if it's worth us trying. We're just going to move on. We're not going to deal with these guys right now. Maybe I should have bought some fuel from them, but we're not going to. We're going to move on. Oh, we just have to refueling platform near the beacon. Although its broadcast signal is garbled and we can't make out its message. Let's hail the platform and attempt to communicate. There's a screech from our con system and the broadcast suddenly cuts off. The platform suddenly begins to move, revealing itself to be a Lanius ship. That's an odd series of events there. These guys can't hurt us, though. Every so often, you get enemies who are complete pushovers, like these guys. They literally can do nothing to us. With a heavy ion and a halberd beam, no teleporting, no hacking, no mind control. They're basically nothing enemies. So we're going to make them regret their poor status and blast them repeatedly. The sad part is they don't even give us any ability to like train up our shield skill or anything because they can't really hurt us. They can't fire any weapons that actually do anything really to us. There we go. Those are your shields destroyed. Next shot is the helm. Then we're going to take you down very shortly after that. How did you miss? You must have an incredible autopilot. Alright, hull laser. Hit, try and hit them, please. Two shots will do. One shot is not sufficient. That's more like it. Goodbye, Lanius Scout. Nice try. And the ship explodes, even behind a collection of useful scrap material, giving us a missile, drone part, and 45 scrap. When we investigate the fueling platform, it looks as if the Lanius were uninterested in the fuel reserves on the station, and there's a good amount of fuel left. We take what our ship can hold and prepare to jump to the next beacon. Apparently our ship can only hold three, but whatever. 121 scrap on hand is very nice. We have two jumps before the exit of the beacon, it looks like. Before the exit beacon, rather. We're going to buy ourselves another power bar with that. We have 90 scrap left to spend, which we're definitely going to use to upgrade our doors, because our doors have been giving us a hard time. Now we have maximum security doors, and borders shouldn't be quite so ridiculously powerful anymore, which would be lovely. So, our scans have picked up a Lanius vessel in this system. It appears to be harvesting a rich debris field, harvesting the minerals. All right, navigating a rich debris field, in fact. Let's attempt to harvest some for ourselves. As we attempt to navigate the debris, we come too close to the Lania ship, and they come to try and harvest us. Well, <coughs> mind control is not cool, especially since it hit our pilot. Uh, there's not a lot we can do about that, though. We're going to send a Freelancer over to make sure it doesn't explode, although they did just... Of all of the rooms... All right, let's go send our crew to go protect our med bay, because now we're going to need to. That's, that's pretty bad luck. Of all the places they could go with our new... Uh, Level 3 doors everywhere. They decide to go to the one room where we really can't afford to have them stay. And I really can't afford to have my Zoltan stay there either. You're going to go back to shields and make sure our shields are tough. Not that it really matters since we'd be cloaking their strike anyway, but whatever. There we go. I will need that cloaking bay on the clone bay online though. Alright, that's that sorted out. Problem is, there's no way for us to effectively get oxygen in there. 
So we're gonna have to send you guys in on your own. This is gonna be bad. We can cloak this salvo up pretty easily, but our crew are gonna have a hard time. We could just let them destroy the system, though, which might honestly be what we do, although they're trying to leave repeatedly, which is not the greatest. I forgot to dodge that entirely. Cloak. Ow. Well, that was really dumb. I completely forgot to actually try and dodge that, which is really stupid. All right, well, at least we didn't take any ion damage, but we're still not in a great spot. We're going to send our crew over there to distract these guys. They're trying to destroy our doors now, which is kind of annoying. Hopefully they decide to go home, though, if we can get a bit of damage in this time. They are going to be cloaking again soon. There's another missile on its way. We have no cloak now. Thankfully that one missed. We're going to fire at their weapon system here and hopefully do a good amount of damage. They've got two shields, which means we have a potential to take, yep, take them out almost completely, which is great. They are destroying our doors, though, which I'm not super fond of still. Mind control comes in again, this time mind controlling... Um, why is Raider here and Freelancer over here? That was not what I meant to do at all. Alright, well they're going to go in and combine forces destroy our helm. But honestly, it might be worth just letting them do that. They're going to be suffocating Raider soon though, and I can't have him leave the room unfortunately. But uh, yeah, this is not ideal. We get our crew in there, hopefully that mind control effect ends soon. He needs to get out of there before he suffocates. Alright, we have him back under our control. He's going to come over here. Thankfully, they've only really destroyed a couple additional systems, and they can't still hurt us. So while we have taken a whole bunch of system damage, we're actually still in a pretty good spot. We want these guys to go home, though. Or seriously. Hurry up and decide the safety of your ship is more important than blowing up irrelevant pieces of ours. Apparently not, though. Alright, let's get in this clone bay. You can't destroy that very easily. I'm not going to let you just have your way with it. Unfortunately, our doors are destroyed, so I can't do much else about this, and if I do let my crew die like this, then they're probably going to destroy the system, and then I'm in real trouble. So, let's just not... Back to the previous platform of letting them destroy the systems they want to destroy. Despite the fact that it's not very good for us, it doesn't really matter. These guys should die this time. We are in a nasty spot here, though, seriously. We need these guys to get off our ship, otherwise we will lose. I think we will actually just straight up lose if they stay on our ship like this. We need you to go home! You silly Lanius. Finally. Oh, no. Did they send different Lanius when they returned that guy? I don't even know. We were basically out of O2, though. We need to turn that system on pronto. What are you guys doing? Don't destroy my oxygen system. No, 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 no. I can't let you... I can't go in there, though, because I don't want to kill Freelancer while our system's destroyed. Ugh. Come on, now. Come on, now. Stop it. I can't... I can't afford to kill you, Freelancer. Stop it. Okay, that'll do. As soon as we get control of him, he has to get out of that room, though. He's got eight health, which is just enough to bail. Okay, they left, which is good. Holy cow. What a ridiculous scenario this has been. All right, reappear so I can rip and kill you. All right. Open fire. Unleash laser-based hell. Those guys are dead. Fantastic. Okay, that was ridiculous. Ship explodes, even behind a collection of useful scrap material, giving us one missile, one drone part, and 42 scrap. When we investigate the debris, we find that with the competitor gone, we can investigate the field and salvage another missile, drone part, and 31 scraps. That's a very nice reward for that mission, given that it really hurt. But holy cow, that was a disaster. All right, let's go do some repairs, guys. <laughs> Because, wow, do we need them. Then we're going to have to medicinal airlock our crew, I think, so they don't get wrecked here. Whew, I think we need to upgrade our clone bay a little bit. So we're not quite as susceptible to immediately getting blown up by anything that happens to attack it. Jeez, though, we definitely had a hard time there. Let's go repair our helm next. Lovely. We'll let Mercenary live. He doesn't need to die at this point. <laughs> no shield skill anymore. That's the problem. Shields and weapons are the ones that are really hard to uh, keep high if you are... Well, weapons not that bad. Shields is the worst one. You don't want your shield crew to be medicinal airlocked because he will have a hard time recovering from that. So there we go. Powered up again. Now we can use an extra power bar to run that when we need it. We're going to medicinal airlock our crew here. They'll regenerate more over jumps and they heal faster as well, which is quite nice. So Raider and Freelancer will be back shortly. Just a brief little cloning break. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Alright. There you go, Freelancer. Back on the helm. Congratulations. Welcome back. And Raider. I'm going to send you back over to weapons as well. This has been a very, <laughs> very uh, silly episode. A lot of weird, like, very close to death situations. Which I'm entirely okay with. Alright, let's power up our other systems. There we go. 
We can get to the exit and get out of here alive. Thank goodness. That 30 he health heal earlier really saved our butts, though. We've arrived here at the long-range beacon. When the FDL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, and a small merchant ship messages us. Underground Federation comm channels are all talking about your secret mission. Let us install a weapon to help. Good luck. 26 scrap and breach missiles. Well, the breach missiles are fun for sure, although they take 4... 3 power? Oh, we can use them instead of the charge if we want. The problem with these things is that they're really easily shut down by basically everything. Really easily shut down. We have 40 missiles, so we could spam them, but the 22 second charge time, you can't really spam them. Charge laser 2 is a little bit better, in my opinion, really. This is a great weapon for enemies to have, because it sucks for the player to get hit by them once or twice, but for the enemies, it's not so bad. Anyway... That's a pretty interesting setup we've just run ourselves into, so let's get out of here. Next sector it is. Mantis controlled is our only option. Good thing we upgraded those doors earlier. Okay, here we are. We've entered a poorly charted area of space known to be home to the Mantis. We have to ensure our hull plating is up to scratch and we have enough fuel in the tank to make it through. But for now, we're going to have to end this episode here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing through some more FTL's Advanced Edition here on board the Mercenary Spaceship Compensation the Kestrel Cruiser Type-C. If you've enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the audio again, because I'm still testing out this new system, and I'm interested in seeing if it worked out. I realized, like, 95% of the way through this thing that I recorded it with a little bit of a weird setting going on, so the game audio might be really loud, and I can't tell for sure until after I'm done recording, but we'll have to make do with it anyway. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye.